Now that we have got some understanding of the serial communication, let's see what are the different library functions available in Arduino to perform the serial communication. So what I have done is I have listed some of the most widely used or you can say most used function here. However, the serial library is quite comprehensive. I'll also show you that where you can see further references and how to get a better understanding of all other functions. But to start with, these are some of the functions that we are going to require, that we are going to need. So serial.begin is a function which we will be using to start the communication. We need to specify boundary over here. Then serial.write is a function which is used to send a single byte on serial device from microcontroller or from ESP32 to the other device. Serial.print function is a very nice function where you can pass either a single byte or a complete text string or even a variable. It will convert whatever you pass to it to ASCII and it will be sent to the other device. Similarly, there is serial.println which also prints a new line along with this ASCII that you are passing it. Serial.available is used to check if there is some data coming on the serial port for reception and serial.read is used to read that data. Now without spending much time over here, let's try to understand the program in action. So I'll just discard this and I'll open a blank Arduino workspace. Here I'll start writing a program. Now let's start typing some code. As I said, the very first thing we need to do is serial dot begin. So serial is the class name that we use and begin is the function. And here you need to specify a boundary. For example, I'll specify 9600. It's a very common practice to give a small delay to get the serial module initialized well. So we put a delay of 10 millisecond or 100 millisecond. And in void loop, what I'll try to do is I'll try to print something on the serial port. So serial dot print ln which will also print a new line welcome to esp32 serial communication and let's put a delay of let's say two seconds so delay function here will give you the delay of specified number of milliseconds let's try to save this code i'll save it in the same location so that you can have the access afterwards and I'll call it serial test. Okay. Now <clears throat> let's try to upload this code into the controller. So go to tools, select board. We have selected it right. Then select port. We have selected it right based upon our configuration and then upload. The program compiles first. It is for the 32-bit ARM compiler, which is we have already installed on the Arduino. So it usually takes some time to install. Make sure that the board is connected to your computer. I'm using a desktop system here. I do prefer it because things remain the same in the same place. So uh, whichever you're using, just make sure the board is connected. And now you can see the program is downloaded. Now we want to see this output. Now, where is it and where is it printing this welcome to ESP32 serial communication and all. So in order to see that we need a different software called as a terminal. A terminal can open your serial ports whether they are physical serial port like those are in desktop or whether those are the USB2 serial uh, virtual COM ports which are provided by the boards like ESP32. Now in order to do that we have to use a different software but Arduino provides a built-in utility. It's called as Serial Monitor, if you can see it here. In Tools, you'll see Serial Monitor. You will find the same thing here also on the top right corner. Look at it here on the top, top right corner. So if I click on this button, it will open the Serial Monitor. If you can see, the Serial Monitor has opened and the data is coming from microcontroller to PC. You can see here, the baud rate is already selected as 9600, but if I do choose something else, see what happens. So the data is still coming, as you can see, 
but the computer is not able to interpret it properly. So some garbage values are shown. If I choose a lower bound rate, if I choose a higher bound rate, something same is going to happen. If you don't understand what we are actually getting, okay, everything is garbage because the interpretation is getting wrong. So in order to correctly interpret it, you need to use the same bound rate which has been used in your program. When I say 9600, then you will see the text that is coming starts making sense. So this is the simplest way to send data to computer. Let's try to see something more. Let us say <clears throat> we have a variable. Okay, I'll declare a global variable for this purpose. Int i is equal to 0. And let's say we want to print this variable on serial port as well. So now what I'll do is welcome to serial communication i equal to now instead of print ln what I'll do is I'll do print only because it will then not print a new line and I can print i just uh, besides this line and then print a new line you'll get it and then serial dot print ln i and then I'll simply do what i plus plus so whenever the i is sent to serial port it will be incremented by one so I'll do control u which is a shortcut for uploading the code onto the board and you can see the compiling has started it will get compiled completely and then it will be downloaded onto the board or uploaded to say technically in Arduino terms. Now see it's connecting, writing, 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 writing and done. So let's open serial port. Now you see we directly started with 1 because the 0 was already printed. In that case what I'll do here is I'll just reset my board once. You see. Welcome to serial communication i is equal to 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, 4 and so on and on. So this is how you can print a variable onto the serial communication channel or send a variable to serial communication channel. One thing is interesting here, this 0 is actually a decimal 0, it's not ASCII. The serial.println will convert it to ASCII. However, if I write down serial dot write, then it will directly send zero as it is to the computer. And if I open a browser and if I look to ASCII chart, then we will see in this ASCII chart, zero is, let's see what is zero. So zero, okay, it's not opening well. Let's see some other image. So zero is actually null. One is SOH, two is something, three is something and you know a lot of characters are there. After 48 it starts with printable character zero and then onwards. So let's try it first. Let's see what happens when I do serial dot write zero, one and so on and then we'll try to see the other things also. I don't want to confuse you, but I do want to understand the difference between serial.write and serial.print or print ln. That's the reason why I'm giving you this example. One problem is there because serial.write will not print a new line. What we'll do is serial. We'll just print a blank new line for things to get easier because then it will come in a new line. So now it's compiling. Once it's uploaded, I'll just click the serial monitor. Now you can see. So we are not actually sure. Okay, I just opened the board first, sorry, monitor first. So the code was not downloaded. There is error. Let's properly download the code and then only open the serial monitor. This problem doesn't happen with the regular Arduino boards, but ESP32 is a bit different and it has been made to work with Arduino IDS. It's not a native Arduino board. 
now the downloading is going on <coughs> done open the serial port now see there is a box <coughs> again a box again a box so this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 with delay of 2 seconds it's coming the first printable character will be observed at 33 which is you can see which is the exclamation mark before that all other characters are not printable we cannot wait that long so let me just start with something 30 and let's give a delay of one second instead of two let's see what happens after this code is downloaded now the uploading is started i'll open the serial port as soon as the downloading is or uploading is done again you will see a box but now you see the characters started coming in so 30 31 or maybe we missed 30 then 31 32 and then 33 onwards you can see the printable characters are coming if you wait for a bit long then we'll also start to see 48 49 50 51 52 53 54 55 56 and so on so these are the decimals which when directly given to a device for printing will be interpreted as the ascii code and their respective ascii character which is represented by that code will be printed you will require this a lot in coming times so just make sure that when you are printing a variable and you know what you are printing then use serial.print unless there is an explicit need to use serial.write don't use that and when that need comes I'll tell you in the next video when we try to read something from serial port. So that's it for this video. Experiment with it. Post me your questions. And uh, let's see in the next video how we can read data coming from serial port. Thank you for watching.